Okay, in this video we're going to discuss my purchase of a Spanish Star S Super from the Mosin Crate. Now this is the second item I've gotten from the Mosin Crate. Um, I really don't want to get into discussing the store how he does it because he's pretty well known to anyone on YouTube how he does his business. So I was lucky. Um, but I will say, I'm going to do some videos about the surplus market. It has changed, and things are different now than they have been in the past. And, uh, you know, the, the main thing is prices are skyrocketing. And, you know, we'll discuss that in another video. So, the Mosin Crate, in the way he does business, I mean, you know, he sells stuff as it comes in. And uh, the other thing I bought from him was a Bulgarian Makara. It was quite unusual, and that's, I was lucky enough to get it. And then uh, recently I've looked at a lot of the things he was selling, and really nothing I wanted that bad, but I am a collector of Star Pistols, and he had some Star S Supers come in, which fills a hole in my collection. So I took my chances and got lucky. But now... There was, there is going to be, as I go on, a couple issues, okay, that really are not the fault of the company or the guy that runs it. And how I know this and how I understand this is, see, I bought this giant book about Star Pistols, and I've actually read the book and understand how the company operates and why... Um, uh, these things arise, okay, and why I can say it is not the fault. And this is a book, if you ever get a chance, it's extremely expensive, it's quite big, and you know, if you can't read or don't understand the idea of reading to get a broad scope of the history of the company, the political situation, how it changed, labor laws, everything else, manufacturing, you have to read the whole book, get the whole background behind it, and everything falls into place, and you understand it. And it's well worth the money, but I know some people don't have the time to do shit like that. All right, so, I sent in. Uh, I was lucky. Uh, it was a dealer's choice type of thing. He just had a bunch of these pistols. I sent in my purchase order thing, and I, got, I lucked out and got it. So... Talked to the guy on the phone the same day, made all the arrangements, uh, got my transfer dealer's information over there, and, you know, with, within, it was a matter of days, okay, I got it. I got the pistol, so shipping went well, fine, everything went smooth, you know. And it comes in a box, and it's just all in a little padded box. So, the gun arrived here in one piece. You know, the box wasn't a sturdy box, wasn't damaged. The shipping is okay. And he's somewhere here in North Carolina, so it didn't go far. All right, so our Star S Super showed up. Now, when I first got it, and also my transfer dealer, there was a bit of a screw-up, and I didn't get over there the same day he got it. So what he would have to do is he unpackages the firearm. He gets the serial numbers and all the pertinent information, puts it in his records, and since I am not coming that day, he will take the gun and place it in the safe. After he gets all the information, seals it up, then he locks the guns up in secure storage. Well, the gun was a bit on the grimy side, and when he tried to clear the weapon to make sure it wasn't loaded, uh, the slide didn't go back too easy. So he was working on this, and then when I got home, I was looking at it, and by then it was just grime and oil. It, it, there was nothing wrong with the gun. But in disassembling and racking the action back and forth, somewhere along the line, the grip screw came out and fell out. And I kind of lost it, couldn't find it. I had to go order another one, and my wife found it walking barefoot in the living room, the next day after I ordered one and found the screw. So, what was the problem with the screw? Well, we'll take a look. We'll get the camera changed around. We'll look at the S-Super, and I have a 
SS that I bought, which is a different version of this pistol. Uh, and I'm going to use this as a comparison to show you. Okay, like I said, in handling the gun, you know, racking the slide back and checking it out and everything, um, the grip screw came out, and now I can't get it back in. So why is that? Is that something that, you know, the guy did? Is it a defect? Is it a bad gun or whatever? No. Uh, like I said, if you read the big book, you would know that Star likes to refurbish its guns before they resell them used. All right, like I said in the book, um, Star will take their guns back, rework them, use up parts in their inventory, and then resell them. Uh, a good example is this SS that has inner arms on the slide. Now, about the grips, if you look at the grips, you notice that on this, these are the correct grips for an S, that the space here, and it comes up flush here, it's not doing it on this gun. There's a big gap here, and it doesn't come flush. So what they did is when they refurbed this pistol, it must have had broken grips. They didn't have the correct grips. They had something close, but not exact. And they placed them on this gun to refurbish it and sell it as a used gun. Now, when I went back and looked at his video, he had like 15 guns. If you look at the video, and there's two different colors. The darker color grips are on numerous pistols, and there's a lighter color grip. And if you freeze the video, you can see the difference. It's like half of them had the correct grips, and half of them did not. Now, I'm not saying this guy was pulling a fast one. Maybe he didn't know. Uh, he gets them in, sells them pretty quick. He did not put the grips on there. Um, that is just what Star does. And how do I know that is what Star does? It is from reading the big giant book. Okay, it explains that in there. But I'll go more into that when we look at the pistols together and do more research on them. So, other than one problem, and then like I said, I've cleaned this gun. Uh, what I can tell from this firearm is with the markings the way they're on there, okay, this pistol was not made to be sent uh, to the U.S., okay? If they reworked them, they would have inner arms or some other company, and it has fixed sights, the correct sights. Um, other than the grips, everything's there in the markings. And also, when I looked up the serial number batch, okay, here, um, the serial number batch falls in to, I believe, 1974. I'm going to go check here. Hold on. Okay, quick check with my book. Uh, this gun was made in 1972, and there were a batch. It was in a series of 2,000. 350 pistols and a lot of the serial numbers I went back looked at his video a lot of the serial numbers fall in from that run Now the thing about this pistol it, it, it You had the uh, s That was uh, The 380 caliber and the si which was a 32 caliber sales of this gun post-war uh, Were not that good and even when they converted it to the super and the difference between the Super and the uh, other gun is this is just like a, this, uh, this is an SS, or be the S model. The Supers, as we all know, have this quick takedown lever. Okay? And you just take the gun right apart like this. Alright? And it has a different uh, locking mechanism. So the S's were... A very sim, you know, they were a newer, more improved design. Okay, and strange thing is, they were manufactured along with the older design. So these guns were all made 1972, and part of the the history behind it is they didn't sell well. So 
if you look at the record, some there was like 300, 200, 400 in, in these different runs through the years. Um, total Super S production was 40,785 guns. Okay. So that was it for all the years, starting from 59 uh, to 79. Now there may be some civilian conversions and reworks that will have adjustable sights and everything, but that's a different model. This is just the plain model in their catalog uh, in the 380. All right, and the gun has all the features of the Super, like I showed you the quick takedown. It has the loaded chamber indicator. This gun has the correct sights. You got the little low profile front sight and a fixed rear sight. What they kind of did to some of these is jam an adjustable sight where you'd have this rear sight that really didn't quite fit in there and would be off. And when you use this front sight without having a taller front sight, the gun shoot way high. So that's where Star kind of got a reputation for uh, bad workmanship or just crappy guns. Because in the end, in the 80s, when they were going bankrupt, they tried just assembling all these different models and making some kind of gun they can export to the U.S. and sell. Okay, so there's a little bit on that. So, thing about these guns is my other one, uh, they're temperamental in 380 and you get light strikes. Uh, they might not function well. And a lot of that is because over the years, they would change the dimensions on the parts slightly. Ten thousandths here, whatever, be it the firing pin, the hammer or something. And then when they shove all these leftover parts together or rework them, uh, they try to fit a part that isn't quite right into the gun. And that's basically what causes a lot of the problems with these pistols. And, you know, they've been out of production, so getting the correct part can be difficult too. Okay, so that's something that comes with Star Pistols. Uh, and this one, little 380, I mean it fits good in the hand. If it functions reliably, it's great. Now magazines, uh, the only people that had these original magazines was Sarko. And of course he sold a bunch of these, so Sarko is now, they're out of stock. And the repro mags do not quite work well. If you find somebody making a repro mag, uh, they have issues too. Because I tried using them in the other pistol, and I'll go over that later. But So I got the one mag. That's good enough. We're going to see if this thing shoots. Um, but overall, for what I paid, the condition of this gun, this gun was probably issued some sort of police department or something and it's from that larger run of 2,000 guns so probably somebody put an order in a police department or unit there in Spain uh, they weren't as popular um, the military didn't buy these the Air Force did for a time use the S uh, but they didn't get a high level of sales in the military or anything for all those years they made them other than some police orders, and I think probably these are from the batch, uh, you know, because that's a big number compared to the production numbers. Uh, so this must have been an order for 2,000 pistols, and the serial numbers he was showing all fall into that range. So these are probably used by the police. Uh, when it showed up, it had a lot of oil on it, a lot of grime. You know, you got your uh, import mark there and that. Uh, so I had to take it completely apart, and you know, like I showed you, you just strip it down, and you got to take the barrel bushing and that out, uh, but I'm not going to get into the disassembly. But it did have oil, and, and there was grime on it, but it all cleaned off. There was nothing serious. There's no rust. Uh, the finish on this has some wear and stuff on it, you know. But that's just from a handgun that's been used for about, you know, a 50-year-old handgun has been in service. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And then once we got it, because when my buddy got it and tried sliding the slide back, it was difficult to uh, 
smooth and it was just the oil and gunk built up in it. So the finish is good. Uh, you know, a little bit of wear down here. The bore is good. It cleaned out. You know, it's clean. Uh, no pitting, no no BS. This this looks like a brand new magazine. It is the correct style magazine and fits in there quite well. I will have to replace the grips uh, on here. Just my and I will save these because I'll figure out what these go on. These are star grips. They go on a different model pistol. They always come in handy. And I got all the screws. I found the screw I lost. So can't complain. And. So, it has a 1911 style thumb safety, is a single action uh, pistol. So, let's see, and it does have a half cock. Okay, on there. So, you would have to draw it out, I'd, I'd, and the safety does not go up when it's a half cock. But half cock is there. Okay, so that is another safety on old design. But all in all, I say I'm happy with the purchase and we'll get out to the range and we'll do some shooting with this gun. And hopefully it'll all work out. Uh, and then we'll discuss, I'll discuss this one. And like I said in my collection, I have an SS in there. And as far as buying from the Mosin crate, um, I've been trying to find an S for a few years, and the only time they come up is on the gun broker in an auction. And again, you get into the auction, and it starts at something like they say three hundred dollars, and then you bid on it, and somebody's bidding against you, and then it goes up to four to five, and this and that, and okay, now now you're getting into we're very unstable. So to go to where the price is set and they're just a general, uh, there was no selecting or choosing, it was dealer's choice. So I just said, okay, give me any one out of the bunch for X amount of dollars. I knew what I'd be paying and I believe the deal was okay. Now hopefully I'll try to get out and put some rounds through this thing. Uh, in the next day or so, and I'll show you me shooting it on the range. All right, stay tuned.